Tom Bizance, also known as Mr. Numbers on YouTube, has been called a math magician. He is the founder of Pattern Play Math, a unique, visual, fun, and whole body way for preschoolers all the way up to sixth grade students to master basic math. He's taught in public and private Santa Barbara schools and has presented classes at Girls Inc., Boys and Girls Club of Santa Barbara, several local libraries, and he co-created a local Pi Day celebration. He has worked with United Way's Fun in the Sun program in five schools in four school districts. His math books have sold in over 45 countries. Kids play with number circles, tic-tac-toe squares, the easy times table, simple number language, and more as they create a playful and effective foundation for numbers. What I do is pattern play math, playing with the patterns and numbers, a fun way to visually and sensually um, experience math and numbers. And it really is a lot helpful for kids to play as they learn. Enjoy this one. And here we go. I'm going to start with a slideshow first. Fifteen ways ten dot number circles teach math. Wonderful. So what are, we're just going to go through some of these ways. And actually there's more than 15 ways, but I want you to see this. Play is the best way to learn. That's the way all animals learn, and it's the way kids learn. And scientists have recently determined that it takes approximately 400 repetitions to create a new synapse in the brain, unless it is done with play, in which case it takes between 10 and 20 repetitions. That's from uh, Dr. Purvis, uh, and it's a fun way uh, to see that. And Play is the first one. The second one is that zero to nine structure. And here we see top of the wheel is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then zero again, which also is 10. And we do the same thing down here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, halfway around, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The zero to nine structure is all there is in digits. We want to understand that, and then we get 9, 10, and we do, what I do is not 11, 12, 13, but 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, 10, 5, 10, 6, 10, 7, 10, 8, 10, 9, in two tens. And you will see, just even today, how many times that's going to make it easier for kids. What we want to do is, is really have them play. Um, and use easy tools. And language is an important one. I call it simple number language. And it also learns place value because actually all the work that we are doing today is almost all in the ones digits. And then occasionally we will go to 110 in the tens digits and the tens are another 10 digit wheel. The same thing. It looks identical in the hundreds. If we get 10 tens, we go to 100. So just number wheels and a couple number wheels like this create structure. And you can also go the other way. There's our period. And this is tenths. And we can go hundreds. So you can go as all numbers are covered with number wheels. So once you see the patterns in the ones digits, that's where it's real. And then you can go on from there. And number four is focus on 10 and five, which is visual because zero and 10 are on the top and five is on the bottom. That's one way to do it. The other way is really seeing that the number wheel supports the basic importance of 10 bonds, the numbers that add up to 10. Let's continue on. This is what we did last week. And what we looked at is that um, all the lines, when you are anywhere in a number line, let's, let's just do oh, eights. So if you take zero, eight here, and then 
one more than zero is one and one less than eight is seven. So seven and one are going to add also up to eight. And then six and two to eight and five and three are eight. And then four is one less and one more. So four and four are eight. And that's what we did over here. And that's what we spent, um, we did the last session is seeing that those numbers uh, are really um, all parallel lines. So you're learning sets, you're learning number bonds. All the numbers that add up to 10 are the important ones. We just saw that and there they are again. And then one, two, three, but this is also make 11s and make 12s and make 13s and make 14s and make 15s and make 16s. So it had number wheels don't stop when we get to 10. So the sixth thing of the more than 15 is it helps us find answers to math problems. And so we'll just do one here. So we pick two numbers. Well, here we're doing three and five. So now three and five add up to a number, but we don't know what number it is, but we have some tools with the number wheel to do it because one number, if you had five pennies and three pennies, okay, and you still don't know how many that is, but you give one penny over here, then all of a sudden you have six here and you have two over there. Oh, so there's six two. Now that also is gonna be the same number of pennies because we didn't change pennies. We just gave one penny, we took one penny actually from here and gave it over to here. So we have two over there and now we have six over here. We do that again. And now we got one less penny here down to one penny here. And we have now seven here. And we do that one more time because they all add up to the same number. We've established that. And then we do it one more time and there is zero eight. Now zero eight, it, we, I, I nicknamed this uh, show uh, Zero is the Hero because if you add eight to zero, if you have eight and you add nothing to it, then you still have eight. So it just bounces back. So we know that zero and eight, there's no question. It's, a, it's one of those uh, duh answers. If you have eight and you don't add any to it, it's eight. Okay, well, if you know that's eight, then seven and one are eight and six and two and eight and five and three are eight and four and four are eight. Oh, so you just learned all that. So hey, let's watch kids play with pennies. So you got, you're on four, you're on four and you're on five. So right on five and you're on four. Now, what, how many pennies do you have all together? Four. You have four and he has five. five. How many do you have all together? Both. Nine. Nine. Okay. Um, give them one of your pennies. And, yep. And how many do you have now? Three. And how many do you have? One of them. How many do you have? Six. Okay, go to six. Well, cool. So you went to a smaller number and you went to a larger number. Okay, give them another one. Okay. Two. two and seven. Cool. Give them another one. Isn't that cool? You still have nine pennies. One and eight. <laughs> Three. Give them another one. You got zero and you have eight and a half. No, nine. <laughs> what I'm going to show you now is a twister. And I want you to imagine, and I want, you to, this is called twister. And I want you to imagine uh, this is a big floor mat because I've got a lot of those. Um, and you can make your own uh, with chalk. Um, number wheel is a real fun one to do it. And I've got videos on it on YouTube on Mr. Numbers. Um, and I'll show you that another day in terms of how to make a big fun number wheel. Uh, so if you imagine yourself, and you can do this with fingers as well. It doesn't, it isn't a problem to uh, do this with fingers, and you have your your feet on five and four, and you want to add five and four. Well, then just like we were doing, then those quarters are your feet, and then these pennies are your are your hands. And kids really love to play uh, tw what what I call twister with them. And basically, actually, there's not a lot of twisting because it's all pretty straight, but it's a good stretch. 
Um, because if you're at five and four, then uh, imagine four gives a penny to five, and that becomes three and six. And you still have the same amount of pennies. Four and five and three and six are going to add up to the same thing. And then you have them touch the next two numbers. So if this guy gives one penny over here, then he goes down to two and he goes up to seven. Again, it's the same number. And kids understand that you are adding to the same number. So um, here you go and you do it again. And you go to eight, one. And it's a real stretch for kids, especially if this is like a four foot or five foot number wheel. Sometimes a couple of kids will work with each other um, and, and do it. There's a lot of creative ways to play uh, with this. And gave one here. Now he's going to give this last penny over here. And this goes up to nine. And so nine plus zero is exactly the same amount is eight and one and seven and two and six and three and five and four. So with that being true, then zero is the hero. So nine plus zero equals goes right back to nine. Nine is the answer. That means eight and one is the same answer, seven and two, six and three and five and four. I really recommend you play uh, with the kids with Twister uh, a lot because it's a really fun um game in their learning a tremendous amount when they play it. Here is an example of kids getting excited about math using Twister. Who wants, who wants to do Twister on here? Me! Okay, you're first. Put a, put a hand and foot. A hand and foot on two and seven. Okay, now, zero, nine, or nine. Okay, who's next? Or you can learn math quietly with both mind and body. Two, four and six are three and seven. And then two and eight and nine and one and ten and zero. So ten, ten is the answer. That's what you add to. Great, great. That's how you... So let's just look at those problems. So we have our first problem is three plus four. Okay, so we draw a line. And then if three gives a penny there, then we're at two, five. Don't know what the number is necessarily, but hey, we're playing and it's all still being the same. And then we give another number, another penny, and we're down to one here and we're up to six here. One up, one down. And then we give the last one away. And we are at zero and seven. And of course, seven plus no more bounces right back to seven. So seven plus zero equals seven. And six plus one equals seven. And five plus two is seven. And four plus three equals seven. So all those numbers, you're learning not just one. You're just not learning three plus four is seven as one fact. You're actually learning the whole group of all the numbers that add up to seven. And there's a huge bonus. Because we're dealing with just the ones digits, it still works if we call this 10. So this is 10 plus 7 is, I call it 10, 7. <laughs> it couldn't be easier, right? 10 plus 7 is 10, 7. Not necessarily 17. You can do that if you want. And if you go this way, and you're at 10 and 7, you go one less here and one more there is nine and eight. And that is 10, seven. So you've solved this one problem, that is seven, but you've also found all these answers. And actually this could be 10, one plus six is 10, seven. And 10, two plus five is 10, seven. And 10, three plus four is 10, seven. Uh, we'll do some more of that later, but I, I want you to just get a sense for that. And now let's do this one. And we'll do six plus five. Okay, five gives one. We're working towards zero. What you want to do is you, you don't want to work away from zero. Here we're at the end, so we have to work this way. But if you have a choice, you're working towards zero because zero is the hero. Zero is the answer. So six, five, and then you have seven, four, 
and eight three. And by now, kids are starting to accept that. Okay, one more and one less. It's going to be the same number. And nine and two. And we're at nine. So that makes this 10. And that's 10 one is the answer. 10 one. And we write it like this. That is 10 one. And you can call it 11 if you want. But I think to me, that is a uh, poor way uh, it's, it's a handicap way for kids to learn numbers. Use use eleven when you're talking about page numbers, <laughs> but when you're talking when you're working with math, it helps you so much to just call that ten one. I think it really it, this is all based on the Chinese system, of and actually all Asian languages, and they're all better at math than we are, than our kids are. And part of it is because they don't have the handicaps. They call it 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3. We have 6 and 6. So we do the same thing with 6. So we circle it. And if we have two hands full of uh, six pennies each, and we give one here, then this one only has five. And this one is increased up to seven. And then we do it again. And we're at 4, 8. Now see, as you... Once you start accepting this, that it works on a, on a circle, you're working towards zero, and you know that they're all going to add up to the same thing in nine and three. And it's going to be 10 then, eight, nine, 10, 10 and two, and it's 10, two. It's not 10 plus two is 12, duh. It's just 10 plus two is 10, two. So much easier to do it that way. And you could actually do 11 and one are also. So six plus six is 10, two, and we write 10, two like that, 10 and two, we have nine, nine and seven. Oh, that's no problem here. We just draw our line, nine, seven. And this is nine, so this is gonna be 10, and it's gonna be zero, six, so it's gonna be 10, six. Oh, it's 10, six. Now, this, so that is your answer, it is 10, 6, or 16, if you want to call it that, but I recommend you just call it 10, 6, because every, every kid understands if you talk about 10, 6, especially if you go around the number wheel like that, 10, 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3, 10, 4, 10, 5, 10, 6, 10, 7, 10, 8, 10, 9, 2, 10, uh, that makes sense to the kids. So here, we, let's do 4 and 6. Now, this is interesting because you do 4 and 6. And a lot of kids will go, oh, that's right across from each other. If it's right across from each other, that means that it's going to add up to 10. Well, let's see. Give one away, down to three here and up to seven here. Give one away and add, go down to two and up to eight. Down to one and down to nine. Oh, now we go to zero and this is going to be 10. So that's 10 and zero there. Okay. So that means that adds up to 10. Now, a lot of kids are, realize, you know, pretty quickly that um, horizontal, if you want to call it that, or side to side, uh, that that is a number that adds up to 10, and you're learning all of them. Let's just do 8 and 7. So if we do 8 and 7, oh, then give one away, we're down to 6, and up here goes up to 9. Nine and six add up to something, and guess what? That's going to be 10, and this is going to be five, and that's 10, five. And that is the answer. Eight plus seven equals 10, five. And we write 10, five like that. Or you can call it 15 if you want, but I highly recommend just making it simple. 10, one plus four is 10, five. Sure. And 10, 2 plus 3 is 10, 5. And 10, 3 plus 2 is 10, 5. And 10, 4 plus 1 is 10, 5. Kids can see the patterns underlying all numbers. So it makes it so much easier for them, the other one that's there. So that's how that works. Um, and enjoy that. There's lots more problems uh, there. And you can make up your own. Um, so enjoy that and have fun with that. So this is the worksheet that we did last session. And what we did is we were looking at our number wheel over here. We look at the number wheel and we see that the twos 
if you bounce around by twos, or I call it striding along because it's a long step to go by twos, and you go two, four, six, eight, and ten. And ten two, ten four, ten six, ten eight, and two tens. What's what the pattern, the pattern that's here is two, four, six, eight, zero. Two, four, six, eight, zero. And just repeat that. Two, four, six, eight, zero. Two, four, six, eight, zero. Two, four, six, eight, zero. So how do we get off the wheel? We get off the wheel by adding our tens digits where they belong. So that's what we did last week. And also, up here it says create the twos, the fours, the six, the eights, and the twelves. Ten twos, ten fours, ten sixes, and ten eights. I almost said twelves. <laughs> um, and so if we do ten twos, well, that's the sheet here, and we do, it's still two, four, six, eight, zero. We're just going around 10 plus two, 10 plus two, 10 plus two, 10 plus two, and 10 plus two. And that creates, what we do is we just go up one for an extra 10. We just add a 10 to each of these, and then we go up two tens here because we hit zero. So we go up one, two, three, four, six. And then we go up ones until we get there. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24. And we have created, this is the six, this is the twelves uh, to five, and this is the twelves to 10. Oh, well, 12 times 10 is 120. So that makes sense. And we're also 6, 12, 18, 24. So it's actually the sixes um, because we're actually doing jumps by uh, fives here is the reason for that because it's times five times 10 times 15 times 20. Let's go with the fours and the sixes. And if you go around four, that's fine. And then you go around four more, that's fine. And then when you go around to two, Oh, you went past zero. So see the arrow there? The tens digits are going to go up when you get there. And that makes sense because you're just adding fours from zero. Zero, zero, if you want to do it that way. So you have four, eight, and then the tens digit goes up. And then 14, 10, uh, 10 two right here. And then we're going to go to 10, six. So that's going to be just be there. And then you go to 20 or two tens. So that's going to be there. And uh, I sometimes slip back and forth with the number language. You don't feel any, you know, compunction to follow one or the other. Whatever is more comfortable, uh, do it. You don't make it a, a religion to, to stick with it. W work with what works for you and for with the kids. And go back and forth because I think that can be good too. So anyway, we're at 20, that's um, five fours times five, fours uh, times five is 20. So then we repeat the two, two, three, three, four. Now some kids are audible. So they'll hear the pattern, the tens digit pattern the, the ones digit is 48260, 48260, 48260. The tens are going to keep changing, but they're going to change with a pattern. So it's going to be zero, zero, one, one, two. Same, same, up, same, up. See that? And then that's going to repeat each row for it. So zero, zero, one, one, two, 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 three, three, four, 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 five, five, six, 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 seven, seven, eight. And if you just created the fours all the way down to 80, 20 times four is 80. Great. And you look down and you got two, four, six, eight. <laughs> it's fun to see those patterns start emerging. You're not consciously making them, but they definitely show up because uh, you're creating it. All right, so let's do the sixes, same thing. So we go around six. Now it looks exactly like the fours because the fours, sixes add up to 10. And if you go around six, you can get there also by going back four. 
So if you keep going back four, you're going to create the same star that you did with the fours. But it's going to look, it's also going to be the sixes. The arrows are different, but the star is exactly the same. It's a beautiful five-pointed star. So you go around six and you go around to two. Oh, you went past zero. You want to pay attention to when you go in past zero. So we started with zero, zero. And we went six and then to 10, two. And then we go to 10, eight across that way. So that's just one. And now we're going to go past zero down to four. And the other thing that's a reality here is that this is, um, the number got smaller. Every time the number gets smaller, from for instance, just from our six, oh, we're adding, but the number, the ones that just get smaller, then the tens has to go up. I think that makes sense to most kids. You can talk to them about that till that makes sense. But if you're going from six to two, then you're adding sixes. Well, then it has to go up because otherwise you're going to us, you're going from six down to two. You're subtracting, you're not adding, and we're adding sixes to each, to each box here. Uh, 12 plus six is 18. Uh, 18 plus six is 24. 24 plus six is 30. So the tens digit has to go up. So same up, same up, up. Zero, one, one, two, three. Three, four, four, five, six. If you just do it off sound, or you can do it same up, same up, up. Six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Nine, ten, ten, eleven, twelve. And look, your pattern is three, six, nine, twelve. That's a pattern you know. So you can know that that is accurate. That really makes it work. So here we're going 14s. If we go 14s here, then we do four, eight, two, six, zero. It's the same thing because we're jumping tens plus four. Well, jumping tens, if you jump a 10 from 10, it's uh, 20, but it doesn't change the ones. If you jump 10 from four, it's 10, four. If you jump uh, 10 from six, it's 10, six. You jump 10 from eight, it's 10, eight. You're just adding a tens to it. So we do exactly the same thing. It's same, same, up, same, up, except this time we're going to just be adding a 10 for each one. And that means we're going to go one, two, and then we jump two instead of one. So every box we jump at least one. And then when the arrow is, we jump an extra one. So one, two, four, five, seven. Well, that's interesting. Let's keep going. And we're going to go up one, eight, nine, and we're going to jump two, 11, 12, and 14. Well, look at this now. Seven, 14. Does that make sense? Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. So we're going to do 15, 16, 18, jumping two. 19, and then we'll jump two here for 21. 7, 14, 21. Is that a pattern you recognize? I hope so, because that's the sevens times table. All right. So it's kind of fun. 7 plus 7 is 14. 14 plus 7 is 21. Keep going. 22, 23, jumping two, 25, 26, and 28. 7, 14, 21, 28. It's cool. It's like you're solving a problem. You're solving a puzzle here. And that's really cool to do that. So you just did the 14s down to 20 times 14 is 280. You can play with that. If, if it doesn't make sense now, if you play with it, it'll start making more sense to you. And if not, uh, ask me next session uh, where you got stuck. So I thank you. Uh, for being with me today. Uh, this has been great fun. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you being here. And I will see you next time. So goodbye from uh, Mr. Numbers. Thanks for being with me today.